friends, and today I'm bringing you, finally, the second part of this little series that I'm doing. And today I'm doing it on the IS-5. Last time it was the IS-6, the original, um, and not the best, debatably. Um, but yeah, now I've got the IS-5, which is in fact, I think, the newest tank out of this bunch. Yeah, because this was before this. So yeah, it is the newest tank newest Soviet Tier 8 premium heavy tank. Yeah. Alright, first off, 2035 DPM. It's got the same D25TA as the IS-2SH. And IS-2 Defender. IS-2 Defender, however, does have the clip, so you know there's that difference. Um, but DPM is 2035, so same as the IS-2SH. Really, the IS-5 and IS-2SH have identical guns when it comes to DPM penetration, reload, and all that. You know, duh. Um, but yeah, so 221 penetration, yeah, standard, 400 alpha, standard, 5.09 rounds per minute, um, best out of the bunch. Reload is 11.79 seconds, not bad, not bad at all. Um, that's T34, what is it, 11 point, can't remember. Um, caliber 122, duh. They all have 1400 meters per second because all of them are using a PCR standard. Heat as premium and HG as HG. Okay, here is where the IS-5 starts lacking behind the IS-2SH's gun. Aim time 2.9 seconds, worst of the bunch. That's already showing something that, yeah, uh, I'm sure will be demonstrated. Dispersion 0.389. Okay, that's not bad. I mean, it's the same as the IS-6 and SH. So yeah, I mean, it's good then, right? Well, good, relatively speaking. Yeah, mm-hmm. 0.26 on, on the move, 0.26 while rotating the turret. That makes this number more, more like 4.1. So yeah, uh, depression 5 degrees, it's actually the worst of the bunch. Hmm. And these are Soviet tier 8 heavy tanks, and it's the worst. Yeah, 17 elevation, also well, not quite the worst, but pretty close. IS-2SH cannot elevate the gun very far, but I mean, at least it's not a French light tank, eh? And aiming arc, doesn't matter, turreted. Speed, 42 forwards. 42 forwards is amazing, top speed for a heavy tank at this tier. Same as the SH. Uh, but this thing goes, goes 14 in reverse, which means SH has that 2 kilometer difference, so this thing can run away faster. Yay. Uh, 770 horsepower, same as all the other ones except for the Defender. Power weight ratio is the best out of the bunch. Almost 16 horsepower per ton. Um, effectively, however, it's it's lackluster. 13.2 um, on hard, 10.5 on soft, 8.3 on medium. Okay, reverse those two. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> Ground re terrain resistances, um, 1.2, 1.5, and 1.9. Those aren't bad. In fact, they pretty much are uh, they're the exact same as the SH. They're pretty much on par with most tanks here. Defender is way better on hard and soft, hard and medium, but way worse on soft, so you know, there's that. Um, no much reverse. Yeah, that still confuses me. I, I think it's just first. Uh, 26 degrees per second. It's not um, fantastic. It's better than the SH is 25, but I don't think that's a realistic number, but we'll get into that. Credit coefficient. For some reason, this website, even though this tank's been in the game for a very long time, well, the stats have been, and it's been released for a very long time, they still don't have the credit coefficient for this tank or the SH. Um, however, I'm pretty sure it's around the IS-6 level. Uh, it's better than Defender, so yeah. 253 V range is standard, pretty much. Uh, 1550 health, that is on the high end of Soviet tier 8 heavy tanks. Um, yeah, I don't think, the, I don't know if the KV, I can't remember if the KV4 is 1600 or 15, whatever. Uh, it weighs less than 49 tons, so it's it's not heavy. Defender is slightly less heavy, but I mean, for having 770 horsepower and you weigh three to five tons less than the IS-6 and SH, respectively. I mean, that, that really helps with this. Um, whole armor. Front is 120. Side is 120. Rear is 60. 
I mean, in raw thickness, ISDSH wins on the on the frontal armor, and it definitely does win on frontal armor with this tank. Even though this thing has a pike nose, it's not a particularly strong pike nose like the ISDSH Defender. Um, it will get panned more easily. It's I don't know. It's it has to do with the shape of the hole, um, and this this is two sh right here has just a flat, pretty much flat frontal armor, so that that makes a world of difference. Um, 120 on the side is good, but it's not all over the side. There's only a thin strip. It's 120, but there's a lot of spaced armor. It's kind of like an is8 is7 side armor. So yeah, uh, 201 on the front of the turret, 129 on the sides, and 90 on the rear. Really not strong. Uh, I prefer Defender going hold down any day over this tank. And let's see how many players. It is the most popular with some of the best stats. Defender, of course, better stats, less than half the players. Yeah, not relevant. <laughs> All right. We're going to go and jump into battles, but really quick, I'm going to record this little segment. Um, let's let's show the armor, okay? Let's remove the GUI. Um, first off, if you're facing this thing, just like this, you know, flat ground level, far enough away, you can shoot anywhere in the tank. Obviously, the smart thing is to do is shoot here. And if he's got that cover behind, like, I don't know, a little ridge, uh, or say something, something like that. I would shoot right here, unless you cannot get your gun down, say you're in a really tall tank and you can't get your gun down because he's face-hugging you. Well, then you shoot the capolas, both of which both of which are, um, well, this one's less obvious than this one, because that's a hatch, not a capola, duh. Shoot here, this capola right here. <laughs> My brain's not in it today. <laughs> um, it's fairly weak. Um, it's not super big, say, you know, T-125 size, but it is significant enough to be shot and penned. And if you have 250 millimeters penetration, or something around there, you can pretty much uh, lull pen most of the front plate. I mean, if he's hold down, why did I say I mean? I, I meant to say or, I don't know, words. Or if he's hold down, you can shoot right here besides the mantlet, beside the mantlet. Um, once again, Coppola is an easier shot, but I mean, if he's angled back, sometimes you only have this to shoot at. Um, and if, of course, if he comes around a corner like this, I would shoot through the drive wheel. I mean, if you don't have that time to aim for the drive wheel, just shoot here. You know, flat side on, sideways on, flat on. He, yeah, you're not going to bounce anything with this tank. Pretty much every gun you'll face. There are some exceptions will just pen, not bounce. I mean, there are exceptions because you can, let's say, hit the top of the tank and it's an auto ricochet. You could have 140 millimeters penetration hit this uh, at the top slope, because see how it's sloped here, and that'll bounce. Um, then at the rear, of course, any big gun, 150 millimeters plus, with a minimum of 61 millimeters of penetration with HE, will HE you for, for full damage. 61 is right here. I don't know how much it would take to go through this, but yeah. RU251s can be annoying with this tank. Yeah, let's move on. Alright, let's play some battles. I already played one. I, the gun wasn't behaving. I mean, that, that's something I want to showcase, but not in that way. So, we are now top tier on mines. Um, we are in pretty good matchmaking. Only two tier 8s on either side, and I am one of the ones on my team. There are nobody, nobody's I'm concerned about. There's a Tankenstein platoon. Tankenstein's getting sold again as of today, and it ends like November the 1st, I believe. I don't know. Something like that. I'm not, I mean, I would, I'm interested in the fact that it's a rare tank and it'd be nice to add to a collection, but I don't have a massive collection as it is, and I really don't see the point in spending 40 bucks on that tank. For 40 bucks, I could buy a Jagdtiger 8.8, a far better tank at tier 8 that makes more credits. For 40 bucks, I could buy myself a T54 Mod 1. And have ten dollars left over. A much better tank, a tier higher that makes more credits. Speaking of 
Unfortunately, the Helsing gun is annoying. We're just gonna try to face hook him. Uh, he does have the reload on us. And he doesn't bounce. Why would he bounce? Okay, he actually bounced his final shots into me. Uh, this tank's armor profile really is... Disappointing, to say the least. Um, the gun is even more so disappointing, but the armor profile really lets this tank down, which is so sad. We're not going to stay out and let that 130 hit us because he does have the 130. Tank at sign, it was the first premium tank to have choice of guns. You had the 130 from the SU-100Y, or the... what tank was it from? I think... I don't know. It's a 105, I believe from certain tank. Uh, we unfortunately bounced off his cupola. It is the KV-4's turret, except for nerfed um, on a Tiger P's hole. That's pretty much the tank at Stein. Oh, joys. So we have lost this battle quite heavily because, I don't know, our T-44 has been spending the last minute and a half tangling with that gig Tiger 8.8 and has done... hasn't even killed him yet, which is hilarious and stupid. Okay, tank and stands are pushing up. Um, yeah. They aren't pushing up no far enough that I can actually shoot them. Never mind. But yeah, we have lost so hard. We're just going to be able to get one more shot off into this tank and stein. Oh, he's using the 105. Different, the way you can tell the difference between the guns on the tank at Stein is the muzzle brake. Um, the 130 is shorter without a muzzle brake. I'm a moron. Yes. I'm the moron, eh? Uh, whatever. Tank at Stein, Tiger, no, whatever it was, killed me. Yep. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot I could do in that situation. Maybe if I was full health, I would uh, try it, but we did 2,800 damage. Okay, 2,736, okay. The rest of my team did exactly 3,033 more damage. Huh, yeah. So... That was a very miserable defeat. So, yeah, let's try to move on. I could probably be having better luck playing.
All right. So this is the uh, the final part of the video. Um, the battles have been done. Um, here, here, here's just something fun. The first time I recorded this, my mic muted itself, which was incredibly awkward because I almost edited the video together with that. Good thing they were the last clips. Anyways, um, what to say about the S5? It's relatively cheap. Um, in price of real world money. However, for the amount of time you're spending to get the clan supply level 10 and personal supply level 10, you don't necessarily have to get clan supply level 10. You can join a clan that already has it. Um, the amount of time that you invested is just crazy. Um, let's see. I don't quite remember what the clan supply is. Um, I, this three thirty million for 10. So that yeah, okay, 1.2 for personal, I think that's one. You're talking about, excuse me, you're talking about a good 5 million XP. Let's just say it's around that. It's probably not, but I'll just say it anyways. Um, the amount of time it would take you to get that is a lot, uh, a long time, okay. Um, depending on how much you play, it would take several months, um, and yeah, I don't know if that's exactly worth it to spend several months getting this tank, or unlocking this tank, um, especially since the fact that it really doesn't have any outstanding qualities. Um, it is fast, or uh, fastest out of the bunch of Soviet Tier 8's premium heavies, um, but its gun really lets it down, that 10% worse accuracy roughly. Um, and the worst accuracy, on, well, not 10, it's not worse accurate, less accurate, it's the aim time, and then the accuracy on the move. Make it so bad, it's, it's just so painful to use. Um, armor really isn't good on it. You can bounce, you can angle your side so you can bounce, sure, you'll get troll bounces off here, you can bounce the turret, but you got the weak spot there, and there, and there, and not there, I don't think. Don't think that should be modeled. It might. And then you can get HE'd in the rear, which is something uh, the defender can't get. Yeah, you'd have to have uh, the RU 251 can HE that, I'm pretty sure. But a 150s can't. Same with the I 6. So you got that problem to worry about. Um, just today, I HE'd one of these things for 1300. This actually recorded two days after I finished recording this video. It's all confusing, um, but yeah, it's. I I just don't have anything good to say about this, other than it's a premium tank and it makes more some credits. It's not the best credits. If you want to make a lot of credits, um, there's the T2064 or the Super Version, whichever one you want to call it, or the Lerver, the Lerve, the Low, the Lion, the Slow, you know, a bunch of names. That's all pronunciation and how, how what you really want to call it. Those two are readily available. They make more credits in this thing. Um, the Lerver has an excellent gun. Uh, Super Pershing has a decent gun and it's a medium tank and its DPM is quite good. So yeah, there's, there's those other options. This thing is really irrelevant. I would just pick an IS-6 over it which is pretty much what I do. And then over the IS-6, I'd pick an SH. And over the SH, I'd pick an IS-3 Defender. And over the Defender, I'd pick a Defender. Because I ran out of premiums. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's my two cents about this tank. It's It was so hyped, and it really kind of lets it down. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did and would like to show that you did, please don't forget to hit the like button down below. Uh, subscribe if you're new and comment on how much you hate this series and hate the fact that I'm dissing Soviet Tier 8 tanks. And with all being said, don't know if this is you. Have fun, stay safe, and bye.